Michael Williams, welcome to Radio Wave. Uh, very strange times, but there is light at the end of the lockdown tunnel. This can only be good news for Blackpool. Yes, indeed. Great to see the government have started now to lift the restrictions. Um, they issued some guidelines a couple of weeks ago for retailers to be able to open safely from the 15th of June. So we are working closely with Many of the retailers, we've prepared a document, a town centre reopening plan that we've shared with all our members and, and offering as much support as we can to ensure that it's a safe opening for everybody in the town centre. So it's long overdue and, and we're delighted that some normality hopefully will be coming back to the town centre. How long do we realistically think things can get back to somewhere any, anywhere near normal, Michael? I think that is, is the big question, isn't it, Chet, really? Uh, just listening today you know, to the latest news and... and watching a couple of podcasts, um, you know, particularly with the theatres in mind, you know, ourselves and the Grand and, and the Tower and um, other theatres and, and venues across the town centre as well. And I think until they're back up and running, including, you know, the Winter Gardens and the Opera House, I don't think the town centre will be back to normal for, uh, for many months, unfortunately. You know, the, the social distancing implications, whether it's two metres or indeed if they relax it to one metre or a metre and a half, is still going to have a knock-on effect particularly for the early evening economy and the, you know, the late night economy, you know, for pubs, bars and restaurants as well, because all the people coming into the town centre don't only come for a theatre show or an event in one of our venues, you know, they actually come, have a meal, go for a few beers, you know, they take a taxi or they park the cars up, you know, and, and the whole economy benefits. Um, but at the moment, you know, the guidelines are just not coming through or any indication of when we'll be able to reopen. You know, at this time of year now, you're a business owner in Blackpool. If you're a, a hotelier, like we've just mentioned, the entertainment venues and the bars and the pubs and the restaurants. What's the general feedback from people uh, that you, you've been receiving at the moment? Nervousness. You know, nervousness that, you know, many of us have got staff on furlough, you know, which has been you know, great you know, for employers, you know, to be able to put staff on furlough and receive contributions towards their wages, you know, so that they have a, you know, hopefully a future and, and can see, you know, the end is in sight. But, you know, there's a nervousness in that if the social distancing implications goes on any time longer, you know, the pubs and, and restaurants, will they be allowed to open on the 4th of July? I, I genuinely hope they will, you know, but not in the current format, not with the number of seats or tables that they currently have, you know, so it's whether they'll be allowed, you know, we're working with the council to try and encourage the um, payment licences to be extended so that restaurants and cafes and bars will be able to serve out onto pavements, you know, and, and have that external seating, which will help as well, because, you know, in the main, you know, all of the uh, food and drink establishments in the town centre, apart from a couple who are doing takeaway, are all closed and have been since uh, around about 20th of March. So, yeah, there's a lot of nervousness and, and as you say, you know, the big event, you know, particularly the Winter Gardens, it should have been the International Soul Festival at the Winter Gardens this weekend. You know, that event brings 3,500 people staying in town for three nights, so over 10,000 bed nights, all those people drinking in the pubs and the bars and, and going to restaurants. So, yeah, there's, it's a huge impact on the economy. And then, of course, it's the logistics of trying to put all the new measures into place once the green light's on. It is, and, you know, to refer to the government, they issued the retail COVID secure guidelines a couple of weeks ago so we've been able to get our heads around it we, you know we, we've understood what's required you know we've shared that with the retailers and i think the large retailers you know they have you know big head offices big support teams who can help but you know some of our smaller retailers you know have been relying on bid for more information and you know we've been sharing you know our thought process with them you know to make sure that they can all reopen safely as well from next monday now with regards to some of the the bigger events i mean one in particular for the winter gardens the the world match play darts we're, we're still waiting on the final decision on that aren't we we are yes i spoke to the chief executive of the pdc last week they're very keen that the pdc world match play is hosted here in blackpool at the winter gardens the home of the match play you know it's been with us for 20 odd years now it's a fantastic event very important event for blackpool not least because it attracts 2,000 people over the nine days of the uh, competition, but it gets broadcast around the world. And, you know, Sky TV broadcasts Blackpool in its best possible light during that period as well. So it's great profile. It's great PR for the town as well. So we're going to make a decision when the next set of announcements have been made by the government. And we're hoping that, you know, there will be some opportunity for us to host the PDC World Match Play, either in the Empress Ballroom with, a, with an audience, you know, of the normal capacity or uh, with a reduced audience allowing for social distancing and safety as well. Do you think that could happen at any point this year or is, is that hard to, to gauge at this stage? I think we've got to remain hopeful. I think throughout all of this, you know, the last 10 or 11 weeks, you know, we, we've got to remain hopeful 
that things will relax. And a lot can happen, you know, over the next couple of weeks. You know, the number of cases are falling, the number of deaths are falling, you know, so that's all positive, you know. And I think the government are going to, in my opinion, going to watch what happens in the next couple of weeks when the shops reopen and town centres get back to some normality. If there's no spike, then I think that will encourage them to relax the social distancing regulations even further. And hopefully on the back of that, then venues will be allowed to open as well. Especially the hospitality venues. I mean, there is no real word on, on a, or a date for that. I mean, we're hearing dates about outdoor space for, for pubs, 22nd of June, 4th of July, but nothing really when it comes to accommodation providers, Michael. No, and again, a lot of the accommodation providers that, you know, that I've spoken to you know, are ready for that 4th of July. You know, they're hoping that with different modes of operation, so if you're staying in a hotel, the bar not, may not be open, it may be room service only, breakfast rooms may not be open, they may not do food, but you know, I think people will want to get open as quickly as possible, you know, because we've lost since March, you know, we've lost some very important weeks, you know, Easter, the Junior Dance Festival, the May Dance Festival, you know, shows at the Grand, events, you know, in the Winter Gardens. And, you know, it has a knock-on effect on all the accommodation providers as well, you know. So for us, you know, it is about making sure that everybody's ready to go and, and safely and we can welcome guests back to Blackpool. Do you think this has brought the community, the business community and the general community in Blackpool closer together? I think it has. I think sometimes the worst scenarios bring out the best in people, you know, bring out kindness. And there's been lots of kindness, you know, the corona kindness that Blackpool Council launched back in, in mid-March was amazing. You know, the number of people that volunteered to help the vulnerable and the shielded, you know, with delivering parcels, you know, the Blackpool Bid, you know, with uh, Mike Simmons and Joey Blower, the comedian, we hosted at the Winter Gardens a hub where people could donate gifts. And it started off because the hospital had run out of water. And, and Joey and his business partner, Heath, donated uh, lots of bottles of water um, to the hospital. It then cre- we created the hub at the Winter Gardens. We had volunteer drivers who were taking the goods up to the hospital via Blue Skies, Michaela and her team, because they couldn't just have people going into the hospital delivering items. It all had to be coordinated safely. So, you know, the Winter Gardens became the hub. Blackpool Bid, you know, were the the organisation behind that. And and businesses across the town centre. We had an appeal from some of the nurses for um, hand cream and and, um, put spray and things like that because they were, you know, on the feet all day. They were working. The masks they were wearing were affecting the skin, you know, so businesses across the town centre, you know, Boots particularly, and others donated tens of thousands of pounds worth of goods, you know, for the uh, nurses and doctors and and all the staff across uh, over at Victoria. And then we extended that into the ambulance service, fire service and and carers as well. And we were taking goods and packages to care homes as well, you know, for either the members who live there and and the the residents and, and for the staff who were working so hard, you know, to um, you know to control the the spread of the virus. So that that was great, and, and the community coming together again. The Winter Gardens, through one of our members of staff, Natalie, created Keep Blackpool Tidy. You know, and now we've got over 600 members. We go out, we do litter picks. Yesterday was the Ocean's Day, so we you know we went along the beach and collected rubbish. Hundreds and hundreds of bin bags of rubbish we're collecting in a week. You know, we do did Stanley Park on Sunday and the, the parks around, we do the town centre as well. So, you know, there's lots of people working together, and it's great, and it, it, it's, ha- it's adding that civic pride, I think. You know, so out of good, bad things sometimes come some great initiatives. Let's hope we get further positive news, and the green light is definitely on for so at least 50% normality for the town over the coming days and the next couple of weeks. Michael Williams, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Chef.